Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the production for Kala's brand new single that I co-wrote with him. Now, some little things to note. Um, I didn't do the final mix, even though I did do the mixing on individual elements. The final mix was handled by uh, Todd Barriage. Uh, please go check him out if you haven't. He's very, very good. And the other thing to note, I guess, is that I don't have the vocals mixed in this session, so it's just going to be the instrumental elements we'll be taking a look at, but that should be interesting either way. And I guess a little bit of backstory on this song, I had written the original version of it back in like 2021. 2020-ish, somewhere around there, and I had sent the demo of it to Kala, and then he came back and had rearranged the song in a more traditional structure and uh, put vocals on it, and so we were like, hey, that's cool, let's uh, re-record this. So I reconstructed the song based on the arrangement that he had made, which is uh, this track down here. So let's take a little listen. We won't be breaking down the mixed elements and how I process them. This will be more of a quick production breakdown. So quickly we have the intro. So this intro loop is something that's from the original original version of this song and recreating it we didn't really know how to so instead of trying to recreate it we just uh took it from the original because it worked well there so instead of trying to recreate it just use what works as for how this sound was made my memory escapes me i'm pretty sure it was something probably guitar part being run through a, a chase bliss mood which is a very nice micro loop pedal that can do all kinds of weird things to it. So I probably just ran something through that and it created that sound. And then we have this little piano part that intros like kind of, I guess, the main melody line that happens and repeats throughout parts of the song. This, uh... Um, and then we get into the main part of the song proper, which is the chorus. So the song kind of opens with the chorus. So, not that many elements really making this up. This song is kind of focused heavily on the vocals and the instrumentals around it are just kind of providing the vibe. But that piano from the intro still plays through. Uh, we have a bass, very simple, you know. Simple bass. Uh, we have a few rhythm tracks. Uh, one of them is playing, is the main, and it's just playing the main chords. And the other one is playing like the same chords, but with a lot of upper extensions and a lot less gain. So it's more of a crunchy, jangly sound. And so that way I get a, I get the main part of the chord coming through clearly, but I'm not sacrificing a lot of the cool upper extensions. And then below that we have these clean picking parts, which are enforcing that main do 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 part. So we have. Which is again, like most of my uh, affected guitars are running through some pedals to give it the ambience and stuff because it has a lot of, you know. 
And then we get to the verse. There should be a beat here, but I, uh, in transferring files, I lost the beat. But in the final song, uh, Kala provided a beat, but I do not have that. So just imagine there is supposed to be a beat here. So there's a main clean part, which I made two tracks of. Um, there's a little pad thing that I made out of a clean guitar. There's a little glitchy guitar thing. And then there's some kind of other glitchy sound I made, but we'll get into that. So this one's called Sterile. This is kind of an unaffected version of the clean part. So you get the idea, it's like the clean part, but then the main star of the verse is this clean broken, which is using a uh, Chase Bliss uh, generation loss to create like this VHS cassette lo-fi sound. And I really like the affected one. Kala thought it might have been a bit too intense, but we split the difference and decided that, hey, uh, we'll record two of them. And so one of them will be kind of clean. The other one will be really gross. So that way you can get both the clarity of the sterile one and the kind of cool vibe of the broken cassette one. Obviously, we still very heavily favored the the broken sounding one. And then we have this clean pad sweep, which was being made from a guitar. I don't remember exactly how we made this sound. Once again, I'm sure that was a chaseless audio mood and I was just, while it was playing back, I was adjusting the clock speed to make it do that like weird pitch shift jump. Next we have a clean effects glitchy. I don't remember exactly what was used to get this. I'm sure a microcosm was involved and there might, there was definitely a reverse delay, but it was just one of those things where we were just playing around with stuff and I had an effect that I turned on and Colin and I were like, oh, that's pretty cool. Let's record something with that. And the entire, uh, the entire point of the first verse here is to like establish a really cool vibe. And then we have this track, which I have labeled some weird shit. I don't know, which is more microcosm madness, but definitely really pushing the aggressiveness of the, the glitch features of it. Which, in the context of, you know, the whole part, adds, like, this cool backing uh, ambience. And then we have just this piano, which wasn't in the very original. Uh, we added this near the end. Which I think adds a nice little lift to the verse. And then we get into the uh, second half of the verse. So that's the basic vibe. And with the guitars, we originally I had played this riff in one part like this.
But when we re-recorded this, I decided to split those up between the guitars instead of trying to play them all in one go because I thought it would sound cleaner. Also, it allowed me to have different tones for different the different parts of it. And with the addition of these chunk layers, which is just a very a thicker tone to help thicken up the uh, the low chord stabs here. And then you have the, like, the little in-between stabs. Um, then down here we have some more clean guitars. We have the, uh... which kind of mimic the, I guess, the chord movement of these crunch guitars. And then we have this drone, which again, made using a Chase Bliss mood, just kind of adds some tension underneath everything. But that's just there to give a little bit of tension to the part because now you have these two notes that aren't really moving underneath these changing chords after the second verse which has the this big wall of guitar so we have these parts just playing straight chords and then on top of that we have the same thing but we're playing more of those upper extensions And then the chunk guitars are playing like an octave fuzz type of sound, which is, you know, all the rage right now. So it's just being used to thicken the part up and just make her sound a lot bigger. And yeah, I didn't crossfade because you know what? No one was going to notice. And here we have this thing, which I have called lead effects mess, which is basically what it says. It's a messy delay post rock kind of sound. So, you know, kind of typical. And then we have like this Ebo stuff, which I'm pretty sure was using the same exact setup, but instead I'm just using an Ebo to get those like droney textures. So we just have these cool like little drone parts that are happening and all together it just kind of creates this big climactic moment. which it goes back to like the piano and the uh, intro loop, but with the addition of this cool little synth layer that I added with the OP1 running through an absurd amount of effects. And then we just go into the final chorus, which doesn't add anything new. But then we head to the outro section, which features the little top line piano thing from the first verse, but just the top part, not the bottom chords. And the cool thing about this section is that we hang on one chord using the second verse and the you know second half of the first verse. We use that pattern to kind of build the outro, but now we're hanging on not the root chord that we've kind of been playing on the whole time. So it kind of gives the whole song a little bit of lift at the very end. So we have, you know, this. And uh, we have this lead mess come back.
which I think, again, it kind of highlights the, it, instead of outlining kind of the more minor tone that we've been drifting through this whole song, it highlights more of like the relative major of it. And I think that with the subject matter of the song that Kala brought to it, it really brings in a little bit of like hope at the end of the song where like most of the song is like really kind of in in a way almost hopeless sounding but at the very end it's like oh there's a little glimmer of light which i think he reflected really well if uh in his lyrics and stuff like that so it all came together at the end very nicely and then it ends with that the pad drifting off with the last little piano line here you know, really ties the whole thing together. Anyways, that was my run through of antidepressants, uh, by me and Kala. I had a great time doing it. Kala is always very fun to work with. And, uh, it allowed me to kind of try some more sound designy stuff, even though it's still a pretty straightforward song. Hopefully I will have more things to show you guys in the coming months, more cool things happening on the horizon. But yeah, until then, uh, please go check out the song. See you until next time.